Hey guys, this is Jay from The Crazy Life of Jay. Uh, you may notice one new thing off this video right off the bat is that I have two hands today. Um, thanks to an awesome little Christmas present that will hopefully make its way to the blog sooner, at least a review of it. Um, I am now able to shoot much more stable videos and use both of my hands instead of trying to do everything single-handed. Uh, so I have had a couple requests for my 2014 setup and I wanted to go ahead and get that all to you as quickly as possible and by as quickly as possible, I mean 21 days into the new year. Uh, my setup has been pretty much ready to go since the first of the year, but it's just been super busy, so this is the first I'm getting around to it. Um, no surprise here, starting the year off and likely ending the year off in my Malden. Um, he's a little slimmed down from, from last year. Um, I really wanted to make a conscious effort to remove some things that weren't really needed, um, so I'll go through that in the video as well. Um, but same old, same old Malden, still looking as beat up and loved as ever. Um, the first glance inside hasn't changed much. I still have the same photo and then I keep my most used cards and cash in this pocket here. The zip pocket I still do use for change from time to time, but I also have an addition of the world's tiniest pair of scissors. Um, and you'll see a little bit later on why I keep these in here, but I have a little tiny pair of scissors that I just got out of a really cheap little um, portable sewing kit from Walmart, I believe. And then back here, all I have is a few bank deposit slips, as well as there's a coffee shop by us that if you keep your sleeve, you get punches. Um, and once you get to 10 punches or something like that, you get a free cup of coffee. So I just keep that in there. And behind here, I still have the same little, you know, notes and mementos that I keep in here. Not much has changed there. Um, it's all the same. I add things from time to time, but I don't think I've added any recently. And then next, I had this in here before. I believe I might have had it in my last setup. The front pocket I just use for receipts. Um, it's really simple when I'm out shopping to just quickly flip and tuck a receipt in here and call it a day. Uh, but what I did is, since these are double-sided, what I did on the back side is I got rid of, I used to have a top opening envelope for coupons, and I felt like it was a bit redundant because I always use this front side for uh, receipts and then just left the back side blank. So I'm like, well, that's kind of silly. I might as well make this like my little shopping folder and use receipts on one side and coupons on the other. So it's the same system as the top opening envelope, um, but instead I just tuck them into here and then I have written the coupons on a post-it note right on the front. And it's actually a lot easier to access. So I have found that I'm using the coupons a lot more because it's so much easier to just grab one out when I'm at the store, but I haven't had any issues with them like falling out or anything like that. Um, next is that side zip pouch that I've always carried that has just a couple random paper clips, band-aids, um, whole reinforcers, things like that. Kind of the portable office where these things, there's really nowhere else to put them other than the front zip pocket, but since that's already in use, I just went with this. And then behind there, I just have a couple sheets of stickers. They don't get used all that often, but they, I mean, you can't really even tell. They barely take up any space to keep the two file effect sheets. And then these are um, Sticko brand that I think were a dollar for a little pre-hole punch sheet. So those stay in there because I do use them from time to time. Um, next is uh, just a divider. I literally just took, um, I believe this was some sort of a divider, a piece of cardstock, something along those lines, and I just covered it with a pretty cardstock paper and used my laminating machine to um, laminate both sides so that it was just protected a little bit. And then it's got my pen loop. I think you can kind of see the indentation in there, just a staples pen loop. Um, to carry the highlighters. I've been using these a lot. I actually found these. They are Staples Hype highlighters. I think you can see on there. Um, they come in a three pack and I think they're usually at about four dollars for a three pack but I managed to walk into Staples when they were selling them on clearance for 50 cents a pack so of course I had to snatch up three of them. Uh, and I like them because it allows me to do cross off my to-dos with the yellow and then any notifications or anything that I really need to stand out, I use the other color right now, it's orange. Um, so it's really nice to be able to cross off to do's, you know, highlight notifications all with one highlighter and it means that I still only am carrying two pens in my binder. Um, the other change from last year is I really slimmed down the amount of cards that I'm carrying with me. I used to have three of these in here and they were all stuffed and I really sat down and figured out how many cards I actually need, what am I really using, and I narrowed it down to, I think now it's the six that I do really use, I carry with me all the time. Um, so shopping cards on the front, and then a Starbucks card, a credit card that I've obviously covered, and then a um, beer club card for a local restaurant. 
So those all stay in there at all times, but it's really slimmed it down um, from last year when I had, I had all of these in here and they had more cards. So it definitely was a lot bulkier having that. Um, up next is my capture section. It does have its side tab. And then I also added a um, ruler, another today ruler to the top. So it's really easy to open, you know, even from here, I can easily just flip to this section quite easily from either the top or the side. Um, I've realized that for me to have a capture section, it really has to be functional and I have to be able to get to it or else I'm not going to use it. And typically I also found just through using it for a few months is in the capture section, I use post-it notes the most. Um, so I really created kind of a double-sided dashboard here where this page is just the back of the divider and then this page was cut from a Cosmopolitan UK magazine. Um, it was a really nice thick piece of acetate that was on an ad in that magazine and I literally just went post-it note happy because um, I find when I'm capturing stuff typically I'm grabbing some sort of a post-it note to jot it down on so I'm not wasting a whole piece of paper. So this is the, the two pages of the capture section that get used the most. But I also do behind that, I have you know a couple sheets of lined paper, some blank paper, and one to-do sheet, just in case I need to jot down. The other day I had an idea for a bigger DIY project. So I was able to you know flip to a blank piece of paper and sketch that out and go from there. Um, so that pretty much comprises the entire capture section. And then we move to the diary. I am going to do a video later this week that details a little bit more about how I'm using my weekly pages plus those daily sheets that I talked about. Um, but I'll just do a quick flip through so you all can see kind of how this has evolved a bit. Um, right behind my diary section is my birthday sheets. Those are just the traditional file effects ones. Um, I have them. I have them for bi-monthly. So January, February, March, and April share a page. And then I just have a little clip on here that I mark whatever month we're on. So since we're on January, I just leave it there. Um, the organized mum inserts that I'm using this year came with these dates to remember. So I have these in here. I'm not really using them, but the main reason that they're in there is because um, in case I run out of room here or if there's a date for this year that I really need to remember, I kind of figured it's two pieces of paper. Um, plus having this one in here has allowed me to tab my monthlies. Um, I just used a my Cricut machine to cut out little half ovals or full ovals that I then cut in half. And I then used a label maker just to punch the months so that I can easily flip to whatever month it is. And it's been really useful. Um, obviously, the current month I have the tab for or the ruler, but if I need to flip to June, for example, of course, they're clipped together. But you get the idea. It's really easy to flip between months. Um, so then for this month, obviously, I have the month marker so I can get to it really quickly. And then just by flipping the page over, I can see my to-do list for the month. Um, to keep it simple, I clipped the rest of the months together, but it's a super easy clicks clip, so it's pretty simple to pop off and flip between months if I need to check a date. And most of the dates I can honestly kind of peek at without even unclipping it, but if I needed to write something down, I can always just pop that off really easily. But it's just a way to go straight from the month of the month I'm on now straight to my year to glance. Um, and then from the year to glance, I actually have three different ways I can get to my weekly pages or my the current week's page. I've been clipping all the previous weeks together just to keep them um, tidy and kind of out of the way and so that I can flip between the month straight to the day. Um, but then in addition to that, on each week's page, I have my pouch ruler. I love this thing. I won't get rid of it. Um, I decorated it a little bit, which is slightly out of character for me, but hey. Um, but I love that it has the pouch. If I'm out and about, if I have a random note, if I have a random something that I can't think of another place to put it, it just goes right in here. And then it's front and center, smack in my face. I have to deal with it or else it's going to drive me nuts. So that's pretty, pretty awesome. So that's another way to flip to the weekly pages. And then I also have a Filofax flyleaf um, that's very basic. And these are just the custom to-do sheets I created with those Studio L2E stamp sets. Planet stamps, I believe, is the set that I have. Um, so I'll go through that a little bit more when I detail how the weekly pages are working for me and how I'm using kind of everything together to make it function as best as possible. But I have those two dividers in the middle. Um, you know, I do have to flip back and forth to see my whole week, but I found that it doesn't bother me as much as I thought it would. So it's more functional than it is um, non-functional, I suppose. And then after that, I really just have the rest of the year in weekly pages. I love, love, love having my full year with me. It's so nice to just be able to go through and flip, you know, and know that Brian's shooting a wedding this day and I don't have to think about, you know, just looking at a tiny month page. I have my full week there. It's been really, really nice. Um, after that is the etc section. Again, this really hasn't changed since the A to Z tab creation. 
Um, as you can see, it's getting a little thicker. I have a few more um, bits and bobs in here. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because it's very similar to the last video I did. Um, and it just has the, the only differences I think I added is some student loan payoff information. And then I created a 30 things to do before 30 list. So it's, you know, there's a few additions here and there, but it's nothing completely drastic. And then finally is the me section. I'm not going to go through that one right now. Um, but all that's in here is my personal information page, my, um, file effects registration page, and then I have information on any medical visits I've had. So dentist, eye doctor, things like that. I just always jot down a little tiny blurb about it and keep it in there. Um, I might consider moving that to a different system, but I haven't quite decided yet. So time will tell whether or not this stays in here. And the last thing on the rings is a um, divider or a page lifter from a Franklin Covey binder. So it is a little bit wider, but it's worked really, really well to make sure that my pages, when I close the binder, they're not wrapping around the back rings as badly. So it's really kind of nice to have that in there just to make sure that the pages all stay nice and intact in the back. In the back of the binder, there's nothing in this pocket back here. I've always just kind of kept it empty. I feel like it's a bit cumbersome to get into. Um, I have my Sakura Micron Pigma pen. Those are the pens that I use and probably always will use. They're my favorite. Um, now that I've said that, I'm sure I'll change my mind soon here. And then the back pocket is still kind of my catch-all for notes, stickies, and random objects. I have a few of the extra to-do sheets for the daily sheets that I've created with those Studio L2E Planet stamp sets. And then the reason I have the scissors in the front is because I took my washi collection and I created a couple cards that has most of my washies on it so that if I do need to write a note, I've been using these a lot. These are recollections. I think I got them at Michael's. Um, and that is a really, really awesome set for, you know, blocking off a week on a calendar and then jotting what's going on that week. Say we're going on a trip, something like that. So that's um, why the scissors are in the front. And then I just literally put them on pieces of cardstock and tuck them in the back. And then the rest is just stamps, a few Martha Stewart dew drops, and then those market dots. Um, I think I got these ones on Amazon. And these are so tiny, so it's really nice to use in the small weekly pages of this binder, or of the organizer set that I'm using. So then that all just sort of gets tucked neatly in the back, and I haven't had too much of a problem using it um, as my catch-all pocket for quite a while now, and nothing gets too bent or beat up. Um, besides the whole binder, it's been used quite a lot. So I'm going to cut that video off for now. I will, like I said, do a separate video on the actual weekly, monthly pages that I'm using, how I make that work for me, especially turning the weekly into sort of a faux daily, if you will, because I have definitely been using those planet stamp sets to create kind of a daily routine for myself as well. Um, but there is the Malden for 2014. It's working, I think, better than ever. I've been relying on it more than ever. And uh, that's about it. If you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below and I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.